Hello, my name is Sophia Curie, and I'm a sophomore in Yale College studying architecture and human rights. I also work as a gallery guide and in public programs at the Yale University Art Gallery. I want to take a look at the work of photographer Helen Levitt, with a specific focus on her photographs of Mexico City. Levitt was born in Brooklyn in 1913, the child of second-generation Russian Jewish migrants. After dropping out of high school, Levitt began working as a commercial portrait photographer in the Bronx, where she first learned to develop darkroom photographs. In 1935, she was introduced to the work of Henri Cartier-Bresson and Walker Evans, both of whom she would meet and work with later that same year. Levitt's early photographs of New York, perhaps inadvertently, document the city's reactions to immense change, post-Great Depression and directly preceding World War II. She documented the children of the urban poor, often juxtaposing notions of innocence with the harsh physical realities of the industrialized landscape. Take this 1939 photograph, for instance. It speaks to the impermanence of the urban environment through its conscious display of different scales of motion. Three children chase each other in an abandoned lot, running, while the building behind slowly deteriorates. Both move, but at different rates. Levitt often worked taking several photographs in rapid succession, such that the actions of subjects would be revealed in stages. In this next print, you may notice a lot of similarities. However, it was actually taken in a completely different context on her trip to Mexico City in the spring of 1941. Two boys wrestle in the foreground, their bodies intertwined. In the background is a convent with its grand arcades and wrought ironwork. The ground level of the convent is boarded off under construction. This presents a contrast between colonial architecture and the newly industrial city. However, our eye, or at least mine, is still drawn first to the children. I see the convent courtyard as a stage set of sorts, our focus pulled away from the elaborate building and instead onto the actors, the children and their fleeting movements. Levitt had only been working as a serious photographer for about five years before heading to Mexico. Her prints from the 1941 trip, including this one, would be the only major body of work she created outside of New York. Mexico was a removed destination, inexpensive, culturally relevant, and insulated from the war that was tearing Europe apart. Post-revolution Mexico was facing the early stages of an accelerating economic shift, away from agriculture and towards industry. Cities were growing and industrializing rapidly, with a surplus of workers taking on low-wage, informal service jobs. Although Mexico City had become a destination for many prominent artists at the time, Levitt made no attempts to engage with bohemian artistic circles. The subject matter that she was drawn to differed from many of her American counterparts, who tended to focus on the allegedly untouched cultural symbols of Mexico, the maguey cactus fields, the churches and adobe walls of small agrarian towns, as they constructed an arguably essentialist, fraught resurrection of Mexican indigeneity. Levitt did not speak Spanish and spent her days wandering alone, exploring the working class areas of Tacuba and Tacubaya, as well as around the centro. The quote unquote foreignness of the city she was photographing is never explicitly addressed, but rather fabricated loosely through Spanish signage and architectural reference. Levitt sought out neighborhoods much like the ones she had focused on in New York places bustling with activity where she could insert herself inconspicuously. Her goal was to capture reality, not in a curated way, but as something ongoing, to document the world as it unfolded naturally. On one of these such outings, Levitt recalls an instance where she photographed a drunk man who shouted at her something along the lines of, quote, take a picture of a starving Mexican, end quote. Though her work, both in Mexico and New York, indicates awareness of poverty and suffering, some criticize her approach, deeming it apolitical, passive, and as the anecdote above may suggest, intrusive. In a 2002 interview with National Public Radio, Levitt said of her work, quote, I decided I should take pictures of working class people and contribute to the movements, whatever movements there were, socialism, communism, whatever was happening, end quote. Levitt's Mexico City prints do not linger on a curated, idyllic, and romanticized vision of old Mexico. They only hint to this vision. Instead, 
The prints depict the urban landscape as it was experienced by working class people, the vast majority. I would argue that this is political in and of itself. Although her prints were not published or displayed until 1997, 56 years later, these photographs enrich understandings of this period in Mexico City. They enable us to better understand urban, social, and economic changes, not through curated frames, but through live human presence.